pay close attention to the, the following aspect. Now, here is the scenario. What we have said so far is if I have a flat fading channel with different SNRs, the way to get the maximum out of it is to do water filling. Okay, that is the that is the result so far. So, this is what we have completely solved now. Now, I want to move over from here to the right side where you have dispersive channels where most of the practical channels that we encounter are of that category. So, the, uh, the visualization of such a channel, this is frequency. Okay. So, uh, you think of the channel uh, frequency not as being constant, this is the you can think of the, uh, the channel gain. A frequency selective fading channel basically says that there is some variation in, in the gain of the, of the across the frequencies. Okay. Now, if I had a, a, a scenario where my signal was this wide, right? That's when I see uh, the frequency selective fading. The all the frequencies in my uh, signal are not getting the same um, uh, 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 channel gain. Now I have a problem. Now, if I tell you, now please tell me what power to use. You say, well, I really can't tell you anything because the the, the result that we have is only if the channel gain is flat right if the channel gain was uh, was flat then uh, and i could have told you you know what uh, the currently the channel conditions is bad use a low modulation scheme uh, if once the channel condition got good now uh, given this sort of scenario the obvious sort of uh, intuition says hey can you can you break this wideband signal into signals which are narrower in bandwidth okay so that's a, that's a visualization so basically i'm going to say that okay this is the gain for this portion of the bandwidth this is the gain for this and now i ask you okay now uh, i have got a wide band signal where the gains are all different i'm going to break them up into some number of subbands okay of uh, so the the, the total uh, each of these let me say that the bandwidth is B. It is much, much smaller than the total bandwidth that you have. Okay. So, now I want to now ask the question, can you tell me what is the capacity of this wideband channel? I could not have given you an answer if it was a single wideband carrier, but now if, they, if I break them up into subbands, actually I can. So, I will tell you that the capacity of this wideband channel is the following. It is B which is the bandwidth of each of those S summation over j the, whatever number of sub such channels that we have logarithm base 2 1 plus very very important uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, gain uh, what is the channel gain that you see or what is the snr that you will see the gamma which is ps by pn and whatever is your channel gain magnitude h of j it should be h of j j omega okay continuous time frequency magnitude squared that's the gain that you're seeing i'm just going to write it as magnitude h of j so magnitude h of j squared times gamma okay so what did i what did we do i know how to get the capacity of a, uh, a band of a, of a of a signal with a certain bandwidth b which has got a flat gain this wide band signal, wide band uh, channel, I broke it up into sub bands for each of which I could sort of make that assumption that the gain is flat. Then I use the old formula. Okay. So, this is the uh, now um, in the earlier case, there was a f gamma coming because there is a probability distribution. Does that need to come here also? No, there is nothing probabilistic here. Uh, there are how many there are some n, n channels so basically there is no uh, pdf actually involved okay now if no pdf is involved does it still make sense to do power uh, power allocation does it still make sense answer is yes why because some of these channels are good some of these are bad so why do you give equal power so the capacity uh, uh, formulation now can actually be enhanced to do the following okay so it is summation over the maximum 
of uh, over the power allocation of these channels such that the summation of these power allocated to each of these sub bands is less than or equal to the total power allocation. It is not P bar, it is a total power allocation P. Okay. So, now the, the uh, objective function will be B times logarithm base 2 1 plus gamma times magnitude h of j squared that is that is my uh, so th th this becomes my uh, this actually now becomes my effective snr okay this multiplied by pj divided by p this is my water uh, uh, power, optimum power allocation and uh, the the constraint would be that uh, uh, sigma j p j less than or equal to p so th this is a, a quantity that will be less than uh, will be a uh, will be a ratio which which we can adjust and the optimum power allocation again i'm taking it almost without any uh, proof that p j divided by p will have to be of the form 1 over gamma naught minus 1 over gamma j with a plus sign which is water filling Okay. So, the uh, key result is that when I have a wideband signal, first of all I am going to have frequency selective fading and the uh, process by which we will achieve capacity is I am going to quantize the SNR in each of those bands. Okay. And I am also going to do 1 over gamma water filling. So, this is 1 over gamma naught, this is 1 over gamma 1, gamma, uh, gamma 1, sorry, 1 over gamma 1, this is the first sub band, this is 1 over gamma 2 and 1 over gamma j. Okay. What is the power allocated? This one had gets very little power, this one gets a lot of power because that is a good channel 1 over gamma 2 is small means gamma 2 is large. Uh, this one gets no transmission, no power allocation because you are above the water filling line. Okay. So, very very interesting a wide band signal where I can do some very flexible allocation and I can even choose not to transmit at a certain power level uh, at a certain frequency band. So, now go back and look at the diagram. So, if I want to transmit a lot of data. I have option of doing a single carrier, single carrier means what you see is the red line, but I cannot do power allocation, I cannot do, oh, I cannot exclude certain portions of spectrum saying hey you know what currently the channel conditions are really bad in this portion of the spectrum, I am going to avoid transmission, I cannot do that. However, if I split it into the sub bands, I not only can exclude certain portions from transmission for the remaining part I can actually do optimum power allocation and get you the maximum capacity out of this system. So, this is a very very key observation. So, this is a way of getting your capacity achieving capacity for a frequency selective fading channel. So, this is a mechanism for achieving capacity achieving capacity in a frequency selective fading channel. If you did not do this, really there is no way we can optimize for this type of uh, uh, achieving the capacity. You can, you will get some throughput, but it will not be anywhere close to the throughput that you will get with this type of system uh, in a frequency selective fading channel. Okay. Now, there is another dimension which is very important from the communication side. Let me just sort of highlight it and then we will, uh, we will close there. Now, this has to, uh, has to do with the complexity in a dispersive channel, complexity of the receiver. So, basically uh, we will just in introduce this aspect, we will exp expand upon it in the next class. So, receiver complexity. Okay. Now, a, a very quick question this is something which you would know. I, if I have no dispersion, this is what I transmit, this is what I receive. Now, supposing there is dispersion and I get this type of a signal at the receiver, what do I need to do at the receiver? I need to use a equalizer. So, uh, a dispersive channel means equalizer is needed. Okay. So, dispersive channel means a equalizer is needed. Dispersive channel 
means equalizer is the only way I can solve this problem. Okay? Now, if I have L plus 1 taps in my channel model, that, that plus 1 says that that is the uh, uh, signal that I am interested in. The remaining ones are previous symbols that got uh, L plus 1 tap channel model. Okay, if this is my channel model, my received signal Rx signal contains L symbols of ISI. Okay, that is what it means and I am sure you are familiar with this notation L symbols of ISI. And in the equalizer uh, uh, domain of all the algorithms, optimal algorithm for equalizer, optimum algorithm for equalizer. Can you give me one of the optimum algorithms? which you have studied different types of equalizers, the one of the optimum ones, it is called maximum likelihood sequence estimation, MLSE. Maximum likelihood sequence estimation. Okay. This is also known as the Viterbi algorithm in case you uh, are more familiar with that name. So basically this is one of the optimal algorithm, there is one which is called maximum a posterior algorithm, but most of the uh, receivers that we is encounter actually implement the MLSE, maximum likelihood sequence estimation. This is also known as the Viterbi algorithm. Okay. The Viterbi algorithm has got a complexity which is proportional to the number of uh, the, your uh, constellation size, m is your constellation size uh, raised to the power L, where L is the number of taps. So m is your constellation size, this is constellation size, if it is uh, BPSK it is 2, QPSK is 4, 16 qualm constellation size and L is your uh, number of symbols of ISI. Okay, so here is a uh, simple example and we stop with that. I have a 4G system. I have a bandwidth approximately 10 megahertz. That is my bandwidth of my signal. Now bandwidth is related to baud rate, num the number of symbol, number of times you use the. So this is related to baud rate. Okay, it's, it is related to bit rate also, but it is related to the bit rate through the baud rate, baud rate times the number of bits per symbol is your bit rate. So baud rate is a more fundamental uh, quantity when you talk about the bandwidth. So this is related to the symbol duration, right? 10 megahertz means I am sending approximately 10, uh, 10, um, million, uh, 10 million symbols in a second, which tells me that my uh, uh, symbol duration is approximately 1 over, let me just not say equal to, it is with pulse shaping and other things, it will be slightly, uh, uh, but you can make it a fairly good approximation. This is 1 over 10 into 10 power 6, which is the same as 1 over 10 power 7, which is approximately 100 nanoseconds that is your symbol duration. Okay. If I have a 10 megahertz single carrier system, this is what I will have as the bandwidth. Okay. Typical uh, delay spread in a fading in a multipath channel is 5 microseconds, 5 microseconds. So, how, so if I transmit a symbol now, it will come after 5 microseconds, a copy will come, latest copy will come after 5 microseconds, this will show up. Now, in this period of time, how many symbols have gone by? I will have to take the symbol duration, uh, the uh, delay spread 5 microseconds divided by, by symbol duration. Symbol duration is 100 nanoseconds, okay, 100 nanoseconds, okay. So approximately 50 symbols have gone by, okay. And if I was using 16 qualm, my equalizer complexity with 16 qualm, equalizer complexity is going to be equalizer complexity is going to be 16 raised to the power 50, mind boggling. Okay. Uh, so this is, this is the seriousness of the problem that we are encountering. Notwithstanding the fact that if I transmit a single carrier system, I am not going to achieve capacity, I am going to have a tough time because the, the frequency uh, is not flat. So does multi carrier, the splitting the uh, carrier into smaller uh, frequency bands, does it help? because it helped us achieve, achieve capacity, right? It helped us achieve capacity. Did it also solve the equalizer problem? We will answer that in tomorrow's class. Thank you.